Hello everyone and welcome to day 20 of our RV10 build. Today we are continuing work on the rudder. So the task at hand is to roll the leading edge of both skins so that they can be clecoed, drilled, and then riveted together. Before you roll the leading edges, one suggestion I would make is to um, put that slight bend on the leading edge of the skin that's on the outside like it tells you to in the instructions. I would do that part before you actually roll the leading edges. First, let me show you what the tool is that we use so you can kind of see um, what I mean about this next part that I'm gonna say and help it make sense. So this right here is the edge forming tool from Cleveland Tool that we got. And this comes in handy on certain spots where you would have two sheets overlapping each other and you would want the top sheet to crimp it down ever so slightly to help them sit more flush uh, when it's riveted. And so what I mean is, let me I guess show you how this works and then I'll give you an example of where we're using this is, um, Again, this is from Cleveland Tool, and I'm gonna link a video below where they show you how to actually set it, but the way that it works is that, like this is just a scrap piece that we have from one of the demo kits, and you would go and line up this part here along the edge. You can see there's like a little crimp, and so the idea you can see hopefully is that it's gonna crimp the edge just a little bit. So take your piece, line it up here, crimp it down and you roll along the edge. And so what that's gonna do then is it puts, it's very subtle cause it's not like supposed to be super, uh, like a huge crimp, but it's just a teensy little bit. I'm hoping you could see that there. Oh, there you go. You can kind of see there. See there's a little line now where there's a little bit of a fold just a little bit of a crimp there up here you can see so it goes along the edge and so that is to then help when you um, have it somewhere like here on the elevators that we're working on where you're going to have this top skin is then gonna get curled and this one is also gonna get rolled. So you're gonna have two rolled skins that are gonna be overlapping. And so this top skin then that's gonna be sitting on top of it, hopefully you can see there in the video, it's the same thing, it has that little bit of a bend so that when these rivets all get put in, this top skin sitting on top of the one underneath it will just help sit that much more flush when they're uh, put together. So again, hopefully that uh, makes sense. You can understand how this works. And again, I'll put a link below about how to, to use it. They had a great video there with Cleveland Tool. But so yeah, this is the edge forming tool. So you can see with that tool, it is a little bit you know, thicker and bulkier. And what we'd found when we were trying on the little demo kit is that if you roll the leading edges of both of those skins, um, and then you go in and try to put that little, um, that little slight bend on the one that's sitting on top. It's quite difficult now with the two skins already curling so close together to each other. And what we found worked out a little bit better is if you go and use that, um, edge forming tool before you, uh, then roll the leading edge. So you putting that little slight bend in it before cranking it down that just again it worked out better for us that way to do it instead of trying to figure out how to get the little um get that little edge rolling tool in there once the skins were already bent and pointed towards each other so we just did that a little out of order from what it has in the instructions by putting in that slight bend before we rolled the leading edge the next thing there 
in the instructions, it specifically tells you to make sure to look at section 5J in the directions that tells you about uh, rolling a leading edge. And fortunately, we had practiced doing this before with the little demo kit that we had purchased from Vans before uh, starting our build and reviewed those directions to make sure we were still comfortable with it and in the instructions for this step in step two it specifically says that a uh, one and one quarter inch diameter pipe works better for rolling the leading edge of the rv10 rudder than the size that's listed in the section 5j instructions where it's telling you how to do it so i went out to home depot and went to the uh, pvc pipe section there um, since that's what we'd seen others using and that's what had been recommended and it had one and a quarter inch PVC pipe. Some of you are going to know right off the bat what the problem was. The rest of you are about to learn. The one and a quarter inch designation that was printed there on the PVC pipe was for the inner diameter of the pipe, not the outer diameter. So the actual outer diameter of the one and a quarter inch PVC pipe that I bought thinking it was the right size was actually, I believe, 1.6 inches. So we went and rolled it and tried to then get the two halves Clico together and just really felt like those parts were fighting us and that this wasn't working. So we're like, okay, well, let's go and we'll get a smaller piece and see if maybe we try a one inch diameter where it's a little bit smaller. Maybe that will work. Went to the store and got that. Still hadn't realized the error, which was that the markings on it were for the inner diameter and not the outer diameter. And that one inch piece of PVC pipe uh, actually had an outer diameter of, I believe it was 1.3 inches. So it still was bigger than what was the recommendation in the book. And at this point, we're, we're getting a little frustrated going, how is this possible? We've got a one inch pipe. It's already skinnier than it says to, and it still just didn't quite look right. When we clecoed the holes together, there still just seemed to be a fair amount of pillowing um, where the, the skins were not actually clecoed together. And at this point is when realized what was going on, got out the calipers and suddenly thought about maybe it was a inner diameter instead of an outer diameter measurement. And sure enough, that's what it was. So it, um, one of the things it says is, you know, you can use pretty much whatever to roll this as long as it's sturdy. It even says, I believe in the instructions in 5J that you could use like a broom handle. So what we happened to have was a pole that um, is a retractable pole that's for changing the light bulbs up in tall parts of the ceiling that aren't easy to reach. And that happened to have, when I measured it with the calipers, it had a one inch diameter. So we took that and a lot of duct tape and taped it down and just rolled that puppy and cranked it real good. And sure enough, with that one inch diameter there, it, everything suddenly fit together really nice and snug. Um, didn't have any of the pillowing or any issues there and we're really happy with the results. So make sure just that when you go out and get whatever pipe that you're, you are going to use for the rolling, that you make sure it is the outer diameter measurement. And even though it says the one and a quarter inch there in the instructions, we just found that that one inch worked out really, really nicely. Um, but you know, you try whatever you think is going to work best for you. Just make sure to check the outer diameter just so that you don't have any frustration or have to then go and roll it multiple times. Just make sure to check what the, what the actual outer diameter is and recognize that um, with PVC, at least with the one that was there at the store that we went and bought, the markings that were on it reflected the inner diameter and not the outer diameter diameter just something to be aware of something new that you'll see us using here for the first time is the pneumatic pop rivet puller that we had recently purchased we went over earlier in another video the little snafu that happened where the mandrel broke while we were putting the blind rivets there in the shear clips for the rudder and this happened a couple more times later on when we were installing other blind rivets and it was re really frustrating. And so we called and asked a couple other um, builder friends, hey, what's going on? You know, I I'd used blind rivets before and never had a, a problem like this. 
and it just seemed really kind of odd that we were having so many issues. Their suggestion was that using the manual tool to install them, there's a lot of movement in place still with how the tool is sitting. What I mean is that you're squeezing really hard and so that uh, the head there that's sitting up against the, um, the factory head of the rivet that you're installing, it's moving around a bit. It's not just sitting perfectly straight and it takes about three, three to four cranks to actually get, uh, get it installed before the mandrel pops. And so they said that um, that could be part of what was causing the problem is just sometimes with the wiggling of the tool around. And so their suggestion was to go and get the pneumatic instead where you put the, you get the rivet in, you slide the mandrel into the, um, the pneumatic gun there and you pull the trigger and instantly right away um, it yanks on the mandrel enough to get it installed. There's no wiggling, there's no nothing. Um, and we've since used it several times and I really love it. It works great. I think that uh, it, it was definitely worth getting and one, just the ease of installing everything with having the, the trigger, but two, to not have to worry. We haven't had any more problems with any mandrels breaking off too soon. Um, and it just, it goes, it does go a lot quicker. There is, you know, a price difference with some of these tools when you buy a manual versus one of these pneumatic. But I think the question to ask yourself is um, what's going to help make your life easier and what's going to help make this project more enjoyable? Um, anything that's going to make you less frustrated and enjoy the whole process more, I think is worth personally to me it's worth the investment we're talking about something you're gonna be working on for you know over a year at least do you really want to be banging your head against the wall or the table because this one tool you're using is frustrating you but it works great we love it i'm glad we got this suggestion from our friends and it looks beautiful now Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon to make sure that you get notified anytime I post a new video.